Hello. I'm Bailey. Nice to meet you. Nicholas. What's your goal here? To glorify God, give people the gospel. Show them the bloody city her abominations. What Do we're doing. Do you want to lead people to Christ? Everyone. Is this what your goal is to come here and like let people people hear what you're saying and expect them to want to become Christian? Well, my goal is to give them the gospel and whether they come to Christ or not, that's not up to me. I'm just, we're messengers, and I want people to get saved, but they may not listen. That is true. And I mean, God God told Ezekiel, in Ezekiel chapters 1 through 3, to go to them, whether they listen or not. And he said in Ezekiel chapter 3, they're not going to listen to you, because they, don't, they refuse to listen, they will not listen to me. And so whether people listen or not, we're commanded by God to go to them and give them the gospel. I agree with what you say. I just think that... As a Christian myself, and as a college student, and I see tons of y'all come out here all the time. Praise God. Right. Do you praise God for that? I do. Okay, but awesome. I think that you go about it in such a hostile way, and it's it just leads people, it makes people not want to be Christians. Like, people come out here and make fun of y'all. I mean, you know that. Well, that's what, that's, out, that's what they did in the Bible, right? Right, but, I mean, if you genuinely, if this is your goal to lead people <coughs> to Christ, I just think there's better ways that you could go about it. And you can take my word for a grain of salt. It's whatever, but I think like maybe come out here at like have a prayer circle, do something that's a little bit more quiet to do. Like like you say, be humble. Like I just don't think yelling at people about the gospel is like none of these people care. Well, you don't know that unless you talk to every single one of them. You don't know that. Every time I've came out here, they've been making fun of y'all. You don't know everybody though. No. And and do, do you know do you know what they did to the prophets? Persecuted them, made fun of them, murdered them. They, Jesus pushed many people away from him. And he even asked the disciples, um, are you going to go too? And they said, Lord, where will we go? You have the words of eternal life. And so, I mean, um, so, I mean, the prophets, they, people didn't want to hear them. So it's, today is no, no different than the Old Testament times. People don't want to hear it. And they open air preached, I'm sure. Jesus open air preached. I mean, when you got a crowd like that, you got to raise your voice or else they're not going to hear you. And, I mean, how else will they hear unless you raise your voice? And, because we want people to hear the gospel, you know, the, the masses to hear the gospel. But you act like people don't already know the gospel. And, like, what's, what, I mean, like you said, like, people are out here yelling all the time. People know the Bible. That's easy to read. That well, doesn't mean yeah. that they want to hear it, like, screamed at them while they're walking to class. Well, maybe, maybe someone will get saved through open-air preaching. Then. Like, people do get saved when they hear the gospel open-air. When they and I, I know people. They know that not everyone knows the Bible because I grew up. I didn't know the Bible hardly at all. And peop, I mean, there are people in this country that don't know the gospel. I've talked to them. They don't have. They don't even have a Bible. I've actually had to give a few Bibles away recently because the person didn't have a Bible. Then I just the most people. I agree with what you say. Like, there's a lot of people here that aren't Christians, and like I talk to people, and it surprises me because like, you know you assume like we live in the South and like everyone's gonna be Christian, but they're not. I just well, the fact that they used to do this to children tells me that they're not. I just, I just think that there's just a better way of going about it, and I think that if your goal really is to save people, that you should like think about your strategy. Well, I'd, I have for years, and I, I mean, I see, I, I believe it's biblical what we're doing, and um, we're not. I mean, we we get we come in and love to people to give them the gospel, and I would rather talk to people this way. I don't like having to raise my voice, but. They're not going to hear me over there if I talk like this. If they come over to me like this, I'll talk to them like this. Okay. And, but it's, I mean, go about it the, the way you, th you see fit. And, um, but, yeah, people need to hear the gospel, the, the biblical gospel. Because there's too many churches that don't give people the gospel. They comfort them in their sin. And then we get to see them at Planned Parenthood doing this to their children. Because they think it's okay to murder their baby. They think it's, they think it's okay to be a homosexual, to sleep with their boyfriend or girlfriend. What's more important? Them being a homosexual or them being a Christian. Well, they get saved, but that will save them out of that that sinful lifestyle. But you standing here saying like all gays are going to hell and like being homosexual. When have I said that? When have I said that? It is a sin, but it's not. That's not going to make them want to come talk to you. How do you know that? It made you. Because it made you come talk to us. I'm not homosexual. But I'm saying, but people do come talk to us. Yeah, but. You can disagree with everything I say. I'm just telling you my point of view, and I'm okay. a college student here. Yeah. Well, I've, I've seen prayer circles come out, mm -hmm. and they do the same thing. They mock them, I've heard them mock them, and 
they don't go talk to them because they're just sitting there praying. But do people ever really come up to y'all and talk to you like yeah. this, or do they come well, up I, and talk to you like they're time. mad? Yeah, all the time. Okay. All, all kinds, mad, angry, appreciative, mocking, all, everything. I mean, sin, uh, when you call out sin and you rebuke sin, people are going to be, they're going to be afraid, all right, because they know they're living in sin. It, it, uh, makes them upset. They hate Why do you people. only talk about homosexuals, though? I don't. Uh, what, I mean, if, if you've been you listening... You, you made it a point to bring up Pride, like Pride Month in June, right? It's coming up, yeah. Here's so, soon. why why aren't you sitting here yelling at all the liars, yelling at... Like, there's a million other sins. Do you not think all sins are equal? I, well, no, because the Bible doesn't say that they're all equal. But um, I have actually have gone through um, other sins today, and um, and I would... And I, as I continue, I'm going to talk about other things like drunkenness and getting high. And I mean, I mean, I talked about sexual morality, pornography. And okay. so, I mean, I talk about all the things. I mean, it's hard to talk about all the sins in America because there's so many. But I, um, uh, and I often recite 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Um, covetous, drunkards, thieves, fornicators, effeminate, homosexuals. And those are the two things that have brought God's judgment upon America most severely is child sacrifice and homosexual perversion and we won't repent and so many professing Christians want to downplay these evils but God wiped out Sodom and Gomorrah because they wouldn't repent of their sexual morality their homosexual perversion and they wouldn't they even want to have sex with angels pretty perverted and so it's and so I mean in America that is so full of pride we need to preach about against that but uh, what the Bible says well, not our opinion, what the Bible says. And people need to realize this is not okay to do. God hates this. And so many religious leaders are busy comforting sinners in their sin. Well, and when you say God hates this, you're, you're saying, are you trying to say God hates the person or God hates just the sin? Well, actually, the Bible says that God hates the um, Psalm chapter 5 and, verse, and chapter 11. says that God hates, um, what if we real quick? says you hate all who do iniquity you destroy those who speak falsehood the lord abhors the man of bloodshed and, and deceit psalm chapter 11 god says starting in verse or in verse 5 the lord tests the righteous and the wicked and the one who loves violence his soul hates and, and the bible says that god is angry with the wicked every day so i mean it's people want to say I mean, I heard at the um, equality rally the other day, perversion rally, where they were celebrating all kinds of sexual morality, that one of the religious leaders said, Jesus loves you. It's like, show me where that says that in the Bible, where Jesus loved perverts and homosexuals, people that are indoctrinating their children and do all kinds of godlessness. I don't see it. And that's what we want to believe in this country, is that God loves the sinner um, and, and hates... and hates the sin. Well, no, he... But then uh, why did Jesus die? Well, he died so people could be forgiven. Yeah, he died for sinners. Those who would repent. Okay. But not so that we could continue to live in sin and say, I'm okay. Yeah, I, I live with my boyfriend or girlfriend. I, I commit fornication. I, Do you sin daily? I don't live in sin. Do you sin daily? I don't know if I sin every day, but I, I don't live in it anymore like I used to. I don't, I don't have a practice of it anymore like I used to. Because God saved me and gave me a new heart new desires and new affections if anyone is in Christ he is a new creature the old things have passed away behold new things have come but do you think that you're better than a homosexual when it comes to godliness oh, no. well not better than them because I was I wasn't a homosexual but I was sexually immoral and God saved me and gave me a new heart so I'm, I don't think I'm better than anybody on this campus I, in fact I know I'm not um, I've lived a worse life than some of the people on this campus um, but God saved me and I'm here to give them that news so God can save them too. But how will they hear unless a Christian brings them that good news, right? And yeah, you can say many, most people on this campus have heard the gospel. Well, have they heard what the Bible says about their sin? Because that is the most loving thing that a Christian can do is tell them what the Bible says. Not to say, yeah, it's okay if you live in, you know, if you sleep with your boyfriend or girlfriend, God, God's okay with that. No, he's not. It says that the sexually immoral fornicators, homosexuals, um, thieves, covetous, will not inherit the kingdom of God, 1 Corinthians 6, 9. And it's not, um, it's the most loving thing to do um, 
to when God has saved a person to give them the gospel, the good news, so they can be saved out of that perversion. God also said to get the log out of your own eye before you got your got the speck out of your brother's eye. True, and, and I've had to do that myself, and it was very painful. And that's that's why I'm able to do this with a clear conscience because God painfully took that out of my eye, and therefore, because I wouldn't be doing this if if um, if the log was still in my eye, I, I couldn't do this not with a clear conscience. And so God disciplined me very painfully, and that's what the Bible says: those whom the Lord loves, He disciplines, He chastens. And the Bible says, um, "Better is open rebuke than love that is concealed." Faithful are the wounds of a friend, and deceitful are the kisses of an enemy. And so, so many people, professing Christians or not, they're they, they're wanting the kisses of an enemy. They're not wanting open rebuke. They're not. They want to be comfortable in their sin. They want to accumulate false teachers in accordance with their desires, as God says in Second Timothy. But we're not here to comfort people in their sin. That would be, if that's what we're here to do, it'd be better for us to stay home, because. They're already being comforted in their sin. There's plenty of churches around here in, the, in this country that will comfort them in their sin. Plenty of them. You know, we need to give them the gospel so they can be safe, be convicted of their sin. And how will they be convicted of their sin apart from the law of God, the Ten Commandments? That's what Romans 3 says. For it says um, that through the law comes the knowledge of sin. So they need the law of God. They need the word of God to, comfort, to confront them lovingly in their sin so they can repent of that. And go to heaven. It was good talking to you. Yes, I respect your views. Think about what I said. Yes, ma'am.